that they're going to have such a fun and successful time up there. Walking down the crew access scarm comes Bob Hines and Shell Lindgren. We see them inside and the shot to the left from the outside. Love that shot. The closeout team not far behind. They have some work to do to get them inside. And now our mission specialists have the opportunity to make that phone call. We are T minus two hours and 45 minutes and counting until the liftoff of Crew 4 from the Kennedy Space Center. This is now a look inside the White Room. Shell has arrived. The core on Countdown 1. We are at T minus two hours, 45 minutes. The crew have arrived at the White Room and are preparing for ingress. We are on schedule. Right on schedule. You see he's got the Sharpie in his hand he and does. Megan, he's signing that white wall inside the White Room. He is, he's signing his name there in preparation for launch. All of the crews uh, that have launched from there previously will have already signed their name. And so each one of the crew members uh, will get to do that. And as you know, the, the White Room is not really a room, it's just kind of the end of that walkway. So it is a relatively small space that's being used to do final suit preparations. Um, it does have some, a small amount of emergency equipment in there. So it is a tight little space. Um, but it's important to take that time and acknowledge those traditions that are being built and renewed here. Your name is on that wall. On that wall. Hopefully they didn't write over it. Ooh, yeah. I might have to go back and check. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a look after the launch and just make sure everything's... That's right. Make sure it's all good. In fact, that Sharpie is, uh, is an item on a checklist. Of that course SpaceX it is, SpaceX makes yes. sure that, uh, that it's there. And here come our next two astronauts. We're finishing up one last phone call, it looks like. And then they'll probably walk together. Were you able to hear the call that you made? Were you able to hear? It's, it's difficult because, again, you can't get the receiver up inside your helmet against mm -hmm. your ear. And so once your family realizes that, then they're, you know, essentially shouting. It's not time for a nuanced conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Jessica and Samantha are wrapped up. Getting some hugs or there. Or no, we have, we might. I'm kind of getting juked out here. No, there they go. And here come Jessica and Samantha. Big They'll walk smiles. down the crew access arm with broad smiles. <laughs> well, Samantha is saying something, not sure what she's saying, but uh, she is smiling. I think they could about smile their way into space. Just on the energy alone. That's right. The White Room also allows for uh, completion of cargo load at T minus 24 hours. So it has use to both get the astronauts inside the crew capsule and uh, to get that late stowage. This is part of the countdown that we call ingress, a milestone that we have reached at uh, inside the two hour and 42 minute mark simply means that the astronauts are getting inside Crew Dragon. The closeout team surrounds them and is preparing them to go inside. They have covers on their boots that make sure everything is kept clean upon entering the capsule. Uh, Samantha flashing us the Crew 4. That's a great shot looking back towards the crew access arm as the closeout team does their work right there between Jessica and Samantha. And the signatures 
with some there fresh ink. That's right. Those helmets are 3D printed and customized. All right, let's check back in with our team at uh, SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'll send it over to Jesse and Dan. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, it's really exciting to see the crew starting to ingress the Dragon vehicle and get ready for their journey to the International Space Station. Just a quick clarification, their journey will be about 16 hours long uh, once they lift off this morning. Yeah, that's, that's right about in the middle of what we've seen for most of these missions. They can be as short as eight if we end up getting a basically a phasing angle that works really, really well. They can be as long as two days. So about 16 hours will be nice. But right now they, they're they ingressing the capsule. As Daryl said, we've got Jessica Watkins uh, still out here in the White Room. White Room is kind of their last stop on planet Earth. It's, as we said, it's the end of the, the access arm. There's a seal that extends from the White Room around the capsule just to help keep uh, the Dragon interior as clean of an environment as possible, keep out all the, the moisture, the humidity from that Florida weather. And so each of the crew members, they're doing the signing. They're also getting what's known as a FOD check, a foreign object debris check, just making sure that they're not bringing any dust, debris, particles, things like that in that could interfere uh, with the umbilicals or any of the different systems, because anything that goes in that capsule is going to space for the next six months. I'm really exciting to see Jessica Watkins and Samantha Cristoforetti signing their names. Uh, and they do have this in the procedure uh, to have the Sharpie ready for them uh, so that they can do this signing before they ingress the Dragon vehicle. It looks like now they both have signed their signatures and next steps is to start ingressing the Dragon capsule. Got Chell and Bob in already. And when we get a look in through the hatch, the seats are numbered one through four. So when you're looking in from the hatch, it goes from right to left. Uh, so that seat all the way on the right will be seat one. And that's where Samantha Chris Ferretti is bound. Uh, just to the left of that is seat number two. That's the commander seat and Chell Lindgren already seated there. Next to that, the pilot seat, seat number three, where Bob Hines is gonna be riding uphill. And then Jessica Watkins will be in seat four all the way on the left. Uh, and these seats have a connection point to the suits. They've got an umbilical, basically a, a hose almost, that uh, plugs into the leg of the suits, and that provides a couple of really critical functions for the suit. It uh, gives them a hardline connection to communications uh, through the Dragon spacecraft. It also provides uh, the capability to flow just conditioned cabin air to help them stay cool. Um, so. Uh, performing a similar function to that blue box we saw them carrying earlier. Uh, but then one of the really critical ones uh, that all of the different umbilical points can provide is pressurized nitrox. And that's to, uh, if these suits need to be pressurized for any reason, we can flow that in. If they're in a depressurized cabin, if there's issue with the atmosphere or anything like that, that suit can provide a pressurized safe environment for the crew members. You can see on your right-hand screen that all four of the crew members are now sitting in their seats. Uh, you can see the suit techs there helping them get strapped in or harnessed into each of their seats and their umbilicals uh, attached to their suits. Um, and every part of this process uh, is very precise. Uh, you did see uh, as the crew uh, ingressed through the hatchway, the suit techs even put their their hand over their helmet. Um, that's a part of the procedure, again, to make sure that they're, you know, they don't damage anything as they enter the vehicle. Same with as they're uh, putting together their um, harnessing. Um, again, every step of this process is very precise and uh, we might be able to see it in a minute here, but they do have uh, some tablets and some pads with them where the, the crew can follow along with every procedure, every step of the way. 
and we were just looking at Chell Lingrid. He's seen this entire process from up close before. Uh, we saw Zena 